Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. Thank you for joining us today. In this lesson, we're going to carry on working through paper. Um, paper two, revision, and we're going to start off with this question that for some reason I went blank on yesterday and make sure you can do it. And it's actually quite an easy question. I don't know why I was being set off yesterday. Do you see that we've got tan five theta is equal to tan theta. So what we can do is do the second function of both of these. So it just becomes five theta is equal to theta. OK. And then it's going to be plus K 180 degrees because of the fact that obviously it has both both the tans have got a period of 180 degrees. So therefore we've got if we subtract that we've got four theta is equal to zero plus K 180 degrees. Now we need to divide everything by four to get rid of this. So you get theta is going to zero plus 180 divided by four. So if we go find this, we go 180. Let's try again. 180 divided by four equals 45. So therefore we get K 45 degrees and that's the general solution. That's how easy this question actually is. I was just being really dwarf. I'm sorry about that. OK, right. So let us move on to the next question. Next question says if cos theta is K, express the following in terms of K. OK, so let us think about that. If we've got um, OK, wait, let me just fix this, shall we? Let's say we've got the cast diagram. I'm not sure I need this. I'm just going to do it anyway, just in case. OK, if this is theta and we're using Sakatoa and cos theta is adjacent to our partner and that's K, which means it's the same as K over one. Then do you agree that I could write that as adjacent is the adjacent is K over one, then this would be the square root of one minus K squared, right? So now I've got that. I don't know if it's going to be useful to me. I just need to see what I'm doing with this. Then we've got sine of theta over 2 plus 45 cos of a theta over 2 plus 45. So we've also got the 45 degree angle thing going where that is going to be 45, 45, 1, 1 root 2. OK, so now sine of theta over 2 plus 45 can be rewritten as a sine of theta over 2 um, cos theta over 2 plus sine 45 cos 45 and then cos of theta over 2 plus 45 can be written as cos of theta over 2 cos 45 minus sine of theta over 2 sine 45. Right, so then do you agree that we've got sine of theta over 2 cos of theta over 2 plus sine 45 is going to be opposite of our hypotenuse, which is 1 over root 2. Cos 45 is 1 over root 2. Okay, then we've got cos theta over 2 times by cos 45, so this is going to be 1 over root 2 times by cos of theta over 2 minus 1 over root 2 sine of theta over 2. OK, so do you agree that this can be rewritten as just a half? OK, 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 2 is just a half. Then I need to show you something else. Do you agree that if we have sine 2a, that can be rewritten as 2 sine a cos a, okay? But if this was a over 2 and a over 2, then do you agree that I could change that? 
In other words, I could say that this is a half sine 2a is just sine a cos a. But this is theta over 2, so in other words, I have to multiply it by 2. So this here becomes a half sine theta. Okay, plus a half. Okay, right? Times by 1 over root 2, I'm taking out a common factor. And this is cos of theta over 2 minus sine of theta over 2. I don't quite know what to do with that yet. I'll work it out. So there I can take out a common factor of a half. And we've still got this 1 over root 2. Now sine theta plus 1, sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So it is going to be 1 minus k squared plus 1, because of that 1. And then we've got cos of theta over 2 minus It's okay. Minus. <laughs> I'm actually thinking there's a quicker way to do this. Just hang on, watch. I'll show you. Okay, just bear with me. Do you agree that sine 2a can be written as 2 sine a cos a? Okay, so do you agree that we can get a half of sine 2a is equal to sine a? cos a, right? So if we pretend that that is a, and that is a, then do you agree I could end up with a half sine of 2 times theta over 2 plus 45 degrees? Ah, and then it becomes a lot easier, do you agree? Because now we're still using our theta is k1, 1 minus k squared, but do you agree that this becomes a half sine of, this cancels with this to become a theta plus 2 times 49 is 90. Right, so now we've got sine of 90 plus theta, but sine of 90 plus theta is a co-ratio of cos of theta, but it's negative cos theta, so this becomes minus a half cos theta, which becomes even easier to do because that just becomes minus a half k. After all that sum, that horrible sum that I tried to make you guys do, then there was a much, much easier way to do it. Gosh, anyway. Okay, so, right, happy with that? Let's move on. It says A, B, and G are points on, the, okay, let me just change color. A, B, and G are points on the base of a cutout of a rectangular prism. So this is the ground, right, effectively. T, G is the vertical side of the prism. So in other words, this is 90 degrees and that's 90 degrees. The angles of elevation of T from B or X. So if you're standing at X and you need to look up, you'd be looking up at an angle of X degrees to see T. Similarly, if you were standing at A and you had to look up, you'd see T over there. And it says GBA is up W and BGA is 130. And it says prove that sine W is equal to tan X, so we need tan X, sine of 50 minus W, okay, and tan Y. So we actually have to relate X and Y to this triangle here, okay. And we want sine W. So let's just think about this. Tan X is TG over GB. Do you agree? So let's just write that down. Tan X is TG over GB. Right? So do you agree I could say that GB is equal to TG over tan X? Okay, you with me? That tan GB, this line here, this line here, is 
going to be TG over tan X. The reason I want to work with that line is because I obviously want to work with the base triangle. So in order to do that, I need to somehow relate this X to this base triangle and GB is my bridge. OK, similarly, similarly, I'm going to do the same with tan Y. Tan Y is going to be opposite, which is TG over AG over AG. OK, so therefore, do you agree that G that AG AG is equal to TG over tan Y? I'm just cross multiplying. OK, and now we can look at the sine rule, OK, because we want sine W over AG and we obviously want the sine of this angle here because this angle is going to be 180 degrees minus 130 plus W angle sum of triangle. So that's going to be 180 minus 30, 130 minus W, which is 50 minus W. So that angle there is this dude here. So now what we're doing is looking at the sine rule on this bottom triangle. So we're going to look at this bottom triangle and we're going to use the sine rule. So we're going to say sine of W, which is this angle, over AG, which is its opposite side, is equal to sine of 50 minus W, that's this angle here, over GB, GB. So do you agree that sine W is equal to AG sine of 50 minus W all over GB? But what is AG? AG I need to write smaller, I think. Um, I'm just erasing this so there's space for me to write. Okay, I'm going to write over here. So, do you agree that AG is TG over tan Y? So, we can say that sine W is going to be TG over tan Y multiplied by sine of 50 minus W divided by GB, but GB is TG over tan X. Okay, so now what can we do? We can sort this out. Let's sort this out. So we're going to say, well, we've got TG sine of 50 minus W all over tan y, that's it. And when you divide by fraction, what do you do? You tip and times, it's times by tan x over tg, which means that these cancel. And you're left with tan x, tick, sine of 50 minus w, tick, tan y, tick. Yay! Nice question. Very, very, very nice question. Right, let's move on. Uh, wrong way. Okay, so now it says the line of a gradient of minus two of minus two. So this is the gradient of the line is minus two. That's M passing through the point three T two T intersects X axis at A and the Y axis at B. Okay, so what we're saying is We've got a line with a gradient of minus two. Okay, so I don't know. And it's going through the point x is three, two, y, three, t, x. x is three, t, y is two, t. And it passes the point, intersects at A, and it intersects the y-axis at B, B. Okay, there's B and there's A. So let's find the area of triangle AOB in terms of T. Okay, so let's work out the equation of that line. We've got Y is equal to MX plus C is the equation of the straight line. Do you agree? The gradient is minus two. The gradient is minus two. So we can go minus two X 
plus, sorry, that's a C, is equal to Y. But we've got points going through it. It's 3T and 2T. So we can go 2T is equal to minus 2 times by 3T plus C. So we've got 2T is equal to minus 6t plus c. So do you agree that c is equal to 8t? So we can say that that point there is 8t. Okay, so therefore we've got y is equal to minus 2x plus 8t. We can also find the a value with respect to this for the simple reason that we can let the y value equal 0 and we can solve. Okay. If we do that, we're going 0 is minus 2x plus 8t. Therefore, this is going to be minus 8t is going to be minus 2x. We divide both sides by minus 2. This cancels this. And you get x is equal to 4t. So that point there is going to be 4t, 0, and this is going to be 0, 8t. And now it's really easy to work out the area. Do you agree? Because what we can say is, let me just erase all of this. Guys, again, I'm going to say it again. If you are watching this live and you are stressed out by the fact that I'm erasing stuff while you're still trying to follow it, um, what you can do is you can watch a recording of this lesson. All you need to do is go and find this lesson exactly the same way that you found it originally, obviously after the lesson, and then you will find a recording of it and then you can watch it and you can pause it and replay, etc, etc. So now they want the area of the triangle AOB. So the area of a triangle is a half times the base times the height. So in this case, it's going to be a half times the base, which is 4t, times by the height, which in this case is 8t. So that is going to be 2, 8 times 2 is 16t squared. So the area is 16t squared. And guys, of course, you should be getting a squared for the simple reason that if you weren't getting a squared, you wouldn't be doing the sum correctly because you are working out the area. You are working out the area. Right. Now it says the line through P, this is P, perpendicular to AB intersects the X axis at C. Okay, so it's perpendicular and it intersects the X axis at C. Show that the midpoint of line PC is has coordinates TT. <sighs> okay, fine, I can do this. <laughs> okay, right. So it's saying show the midpoint of the line PC has coordinates TT. So what we have to do is find the value C. We first have to find that value C before we can find the midpoint. Do you agree? So we've got the gradient of BC. The gradient of BC is negative 2. Therefore, the gradient of PC is going to be a half because remember you flip it in times by minus. So that is the gradient. So therefore, we can say Y is equal to a half x plus c. Now we need to find out what the c is, where it cuts the y-axis. And we've got these two points. We've got 3t and 2t. So we've got 2t is equal to a half times by 3t plus c. Okay, so therefore we've got 2t minus 3 over 2t is equal to c. So that becomes a half T is C. So therefore, this point here, this point here is going to be 0, a half T. Now we want the midpoint of these two points. So the midpoint, the midpoint. What do you do? You add them and you divide by 2, right? I'm not getting that that's going to be the midpoint of line PC. Okay, is going to be 3t plus 0 over 2, and then it's going to be 2t plus a half t over 2. So that gives me 3t over 2, and this is 2 plus 1 and a half, which is 3 over 2 
times by 1 over 2, which is 3t over 4. Hmm, that's weird. Okay, let's just go through this again. The line through P perpendicular to AB, so it's definitely got the gradient of, an, of a half, intersects X as C. Okay, so it's going through PC, okay? It says show the midpoint of line PC. So we want some midpoint of line PC has coordinates TT. But if it's perpendicular to line BA and we already have the gradient of that is minus two, then we know that this gradient is a half, I'm right. We know that the X value is three T because that's pointing through P and the Y value is two T. So then we've got 2t minus 3 over 2t is equal to c, so that's just a half t. So therefore, the equation for this line would be y is equal to a half x plus a half t, so that's a half t. And now we want to find the midpoint, the midpoint you add the x values divided by 2. Okay, I don't know how they get that. I have done my best. Right, let's move on. It says refer in the diagram below, ST is the diameter. Okay, so that's the diameter of the circle and it tells you that OS is parallel to PN. Okay, so let me just do this. OS is parallel to PN. Okay, and TO bisects angle STP. So in other words, if this is X, that is X as well. Now it says 9.1. Prove that punk, P U N K, P U N K is a cyclic quad. Okay, so let's go through this again. Cyclic quads we can prove either with opposite angle equals into opposite. Okay, or, I mean exterior angle, so exterior angle equals into opposite, or that opposite angles are supplementary, or we can do the subtending thing. Okay, so we need to prove that that thing there is a cyclic quad, okay. We know that this line is parallel to this line, okay, because OS is parallel, but do they tell you that it's a tangent? They don't tell you it's a tangent, so you can't assume it. Okay. Right. So, do you agree that T1 is subtended by US and US also subtends um, K2? So, therefore, this is X. Similarly, um, Okay, and if this is the diameter, this is 90 degrees. Okay, because that's in a semicircle. We also know, does that help? I don't think it helps, but let's just carry on. We also know that if this is subtended by UK, that's also X. Doesn't help. Oh man, I'm being an idiot. This is also 90 degrees. Okay, so we can say that angle U1 is equal to 90 degrees, angle in semicircle. We can also say K1 is equal to 90 degrees for the same reason. Therefore, we could say U1 is equal to K2 plus 3, exterior angle equals int opposite angles or opposite angles are cyclic, I mean, or supplementary, whatever. Therefore, this thing here is a cyclic quad. That thing is a cyclic quad there. Okay, P-U-N-K. P-U-N-K is a cyclic quad. Okay, now it says SO is a tangent, we need to prove that SO is a tangent to circle KUST. So we basically need to prove that that little angle there is X. Okay, but if this is X, 
then because this is a tangent, do you agree that that angle there is X? Because these are both subtended by UN. Okay, then, I mean, that's a cyclic quad, so therefore that's equal to X. Then this here is parallel to this. Therefore, this angle P1 is, is alternate to angle S1, so that also is X. Okay, and therefore, this is a tangent because by doing this, it obeys a term called theorem. So the way we'd write that is we would say P1 is equal to X and it would be angle subtended by same chord. Okay, I mean, therefore S1 is equal to X alternate angles, but that equals, but T1 is equal to S1, which obeys tan chord, therefore SO is tangent. Okay, this is a nice question. Right, let's move on. This is the start of a new paper, okay? It says in the figure you've got A, which is minus 3, 4, P, which is 5, 6, Q, which is 3, 3, R, which is 4, negative 2, and S, some random point, 4 and a half, 2, are given and tells you AQRT is a parallelogram. So therefore, I know that this is parallel to this, this is parallel to this, this is equal to this, and this is equal to this. Okay, that's nice. Now it says determine the perimeter of triangle AQP, AQP. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. Okay, so that's kind of silly because you just have to do the area rule, but we're going to do it in, I mean, not the area rule, we have to do the length rule. So let us do it. So we're looking at the length of AP. So first let's do the length of AP, which is going to be the square root of um, 6 minus 4 squared plus 5 minus plus 3 squared, which is the square root of 6 minus 4 squared is 2, 2 squared is 4, plus 5 plus 3 is 8 squared is 64, which is the square root of 68. Um, then you got PQ, which is again going to be the square root of 6 minus 3 squared plus 5 minus 3 squared, which is the square root of 6 minus 3 squared is um, 6 minus 3, 3 squared is 9, minus 2 squared is 4, which is the square root of 5. And then we've got AQ, which is going to be 4 minus 3 squared plus bracket minus 3 minus 3 squared, which equals the square root of 4 plus 3, 4 minus 3 is 1 squared is 1, plus minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6 squared is 36, which is the square root of 37. And then obviously we have to add them up, okay, which I'm not doing now. So you would add up 68 and 5 and 37 on your calculator and make sure that you have it correct to one decimal. Now to show that P, S and R are collinear. Now in order for three points to be collinear, the gradient of the three points has to be equal. In other words, what we need to do is find the gradient of P, S and find the gradient of SR. And if they're equal, it means that they are collinear. So we're gonna go M of PS, which is going to be six minus two over five minus four and a half. Six minus two is four over five minus four and a half is a half, which is eight. Now we're going to go M of SR, which is going to be 2 minus plus 2 over 4 and a half minus a half, which is 4 divided by, it cannot be 4 divided, oh, that's 4, idiot, a half, which equals 8. There we go. So we've just proven that they're collinear because they've got the same gradient, same 
gradient, and then yay, we've proven it. Now it says, determine the midpoint of AR. Okay, and hence, otherwise, determine the coordinates of T. Okay, I'm gonna, or otherwise. Okay, let's find the midpoint of AR, shall we? So let me just erase some writing here. Now remember the midpoint just means that you're halfway, exactly halfway between two places. So in this case, what we're gonna do is just add the X values and divide by two, and then add the Y values and then divide by two. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to go minus three plus four divided by two. And then four plus minus two, all divided by two. So minus three plus four is one, one divided by two is a half. Four minus two is two, two divided by two is one. So there you go. So the midpoint of this line is a half one. Now it says hence or otherwise determine the coordinates and I'm just gonna do it otherwise. This is a parallelogram, right? So we know that to get from here to here, it had to go across how many units? There's three plus another three is six units. So to go across from here, we have to go across four and then across another two, so that's gonna be negative two. Similarly, from here to here, we've gone up one unit, which means we have to go up one unit here. So it goes from minus two to minus one. There you go. Right, now, okay, the following information represents the amount of beef imported in South Africa over 11 years, and remember it says, and you have to be very careful with this, it is in 1,000 tons, so times 1,000 tons, okay, remember that. It says calculate the mean amount of beef imported over the 11 years. Yes, next it says calculate the standard deviation and then it says gives a five number summary and then it says comment on the skewness and then whatever. Okay, so in order to do this, we actually do need to use our calculator. So let's get the calculator out and let's clear it. And in fact, I'm actually going to switch it off and then switch it on again. And then I'm going to get into my stat mode and I'm going to go to two. And I'm going to use one variable and then I'm going to pop it in. So it becomes 78 equals 54, 4 equals, you know what, grade 12s, so I'm actually going to do this example tomorrow. I'm actually going to try and download another calculator that's saying it's driving me insane. It's very slow. Um, and then I will come back and do this question tomorrow with a better calculator, hopefully. Okay, and similarly with this question. Let's do this question. It says, given sine beta is 8 over 17, and beta is between 90 and 270. Okay, so we've got all stations to Cape Town. And they tell you that beta is between 90 and 270, which means it has to be in these three quadrants. Actually, no, it has just to be in the first two quadrants, the second two questions, those two. But we know that sine is positive, which means it's in the second quadrant. Okay, so we also know that we've got Sakatoa. Okay, and this is opposite over hypotenuse, which means that if this here is beta, then the opposite is going to be 8 and the hypotenuse 17. So we need to work out what the adjacent is. So we can use Pythagoras. We can say that the adjacent side is equal to the square root of 17 squared minus 8 squared. I don't know what 17 squared is. Oh, and I closed on the try. Okay, hang on. Okay, so let's have a look at it. So it's going to be 17 squared 
which is 289 minus 64, because that's 8 squared, is 225, and we square root the answer, and we end up with 15. So therefore, this is 15, and this side is 15. Right, now it says, with the aid of the sketch, done, and without the use of a calculator, okay, calculate. Now listen, grade 12, there is mark allocate for the sketch. So don't think that, oh, you're so clever, you don't need to do a sketch, um, and you can just work it out. There are actual marks allocated to the sketch, so you really do need to draw the sketch. Okay, so tan beta is pretty obvious. Tan is just opposite over adjacent, so therefore this is just going to be 8 over 15. Sine of 90 plus beta is going to be the same as negative cos beta, which is going to be minus cos of adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be 15 over 17. Um, now, cos of 2 beta is interesting because cos of 2 beta can be written as either, well, it doesn't really matter, but why don't we use, just for fun, 1 minus 2 sine squared beta, which is going to be 1 minus 2 times by 8 over 17 all squared, which becomes 1 minus 2 times by 64 over 17 squared. Um, I don't remember what that was. What was 17 squared? 289. Um, which is going to be 1 minus 128 over 289. So let's get out our calculator to work that out. So it's going to be 1 minus fraction 1, 2, 8 over 289 equals, press the SD button, 0, 5, 6. So that is equal to 0, 5, 6. Okay, so there we go. Now we have that answer. Okay, next question. Okay, and I just want to change color. It says, in the figure, O is the center of the circle with diameter LN. Okay, and VUM, VUM, sorry, VN, okay, this angle here is X. UV is a tangent, so therefore this is X and that is X. Um, it says, prove that K equals X. Okay, I'm not going to prove the K equals X because you are basically looking at a theorem there but basically what you can do is say well this line here if we drop it down is 90 degrees so this is 90 minus x angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees therefore this angle has to be x there yeah, i've just proved it now it says fill in the missing parts angle n2 i'd love to know what n2 is um Oh, there. No, um, okay, so that is, sorry, 90 minus x. And why? Because it is the radius is perpendicular to the tangent. Then m1 plus m2 is going to be 90 degrees. Hmm. Yes, okay, sorry. M1 plus M2 is going to be 90 degrees. Oh, we just had to do that. Sorry. I thought I had to do it. Okay, so the whole of this is 90 degrees. Do you agree? Um, and why? Because it's angle in semicircle. Okay. Angle L is going to be X because the tan theorem. Therefore, K equals X, Y, angles subtended by equal chord. The angle formed between the tangent and chord equals the opposite angle. It equals the angle subtended by the chord. There you go. Right.
right, that's it, grade 12. We will continue with this lesson. Um, tomorrow I will download a better calculator, hopefully, and then we can do the statistics. Yeah, have a great day.